One of the things I appreciate most about the new Disney XD DuckTales series is how character-driven it is. The original cartoon focused on the great adventures that the Duck family went on, but it kind of took the show's setting for granted. DuckTales is a story about a makeshift family that was thrown together by circumstance. That is to say that its cast of characters don't really know each other that well. They've only just met, and the original series kind of glosses over that. But Disney XD's DuckTales reboot explores it, and brings us along for the ride as the characters get to know each other and find their place within their new haphazard family. Today's episode is a great example of this. On the surface, it's a chase and kidnapping adventure, but really, it's a simple story about a kid trying to find her place among a new group of friends. This is the Beagle Birthday Massacre. There's a lot going on in this episode. It's flush with great character design, funny jokes, and plenty of action, but all that adventure is just set dressing for why this story really works. The Beagle Birthday Massacre is actually a story about fitting in. It doesn't seem like it at first, though. The story kicks off with Webby helping Huey, Dewey, and Louie pack a canoe, hoping to join them on a fun day at sea. The boys, they have this long history together as brothers, and she desperately wants to be a part of that group. But right now, she's not. She's the outsider, and she just doesn't understand the group's in-jokes. <laughs> I don't know why we're laughing! <laughs> yeah, you sort of had to be there, I guess. But now you will be! To their credit, the boys are kind of excited to initiate her into their group too, but there's just not enough room on their kayak. I guess we never had to stick four people on this thing. Huey tries to give a spot up on the boat for her, but Webby ultimately ends up staying behind on the beach, adopting the role of a more shy Webbigale that we usually saw in the original cartoons, the extra kid that always gets left behind. For the sake of the episode story, this is really just a setup and an excuse to get Webby to meet Lena, a slightly older teenage duck that befriends her and helps her make up some of her own in-jokes but it also sets up a good theme for the episode. Throughout the episode, Webby's just a kid who's eager to make friends and fit in, not only in how she wants to join the boys on their own adventure, but in how she stumbles over her words while trying to impress Lena. Are you like in the circus? Circus acrobats keep elephant hairs in their pockets for good luck. I don't know why I just told you that, or why I'm still talking, or why I pointed out the fact that I'm still talking. Webby's awkwardness here isn't really what the episode focuses in on, but it is what stood out to me. Much like Louie's story in The Great Dime Chase, this episode reminds me of when I was a kid. I remember trying to hang out with slightly older and cooler kids than me, and how my eagerness to be accepted by them would often convince me to break some rules I might not have otherwise. The way Webby pushes her own boundaries to fit in with Lena conveys that exact same kind of feeling. And the way she later has to sort of decide between her two groups of friends is a struggle a lot of kids have to deal with at some point. There's a lot of fun stuff going on in this episode besides these character moments too. Most of the story focuses on Lena and Webby getting into trouble with the Beagle Boys and Ma Beagle's birthday, and there's a lot of fun chase and action scenes here. But to me, what really steals the show in these sequences is the creative take on all the different Beagle Boy factions. In the original comics, the Beagles were just kind of an endless gang of identical criminals. And in the original cartoon, they were mostly represented by one small group. But each of those Beagles had their own distinct personality. Here, it's both. There seems to be a huge extended Beagle family that makes up all of the crime gangs in Duckburg, but each group has its own distinct personality with its own creative designs. I think this is a really fun twist that both respects the portrayal of the unrealistically huge Beagle family in the original comics, while still integrating the distinct personalities the characters had in the original cartoon series. Best of all, despite all their unique designs and differences, all of the Beagle factions ring true to what Beagle Boys are. That is to say, they're all equally incompetent. For the love of... That's it! None of you get birthdays this year! The episode's also filled with a ton of great jokes, and a lot of them are poking fun at Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Ha! No way! We're all unique snowflakes! Well, this usually never happens. This is really weird! Okay, stop talking! I also love that the Burger Beagle equivalent of the Ugly Failures group gets more and more bottles stuck to his fingers as the episode goes on. It even plays into the conclusion. I don't really want to give any spoilers for this episode, because it's a lot of fun. But the end of the story ties things up nicely with both of Webby's new groups of friends reconciling together. And as the curtain closes, we get a sinister hint of Lena's connection to a fan favorite DuckTales villain. A setup that's sure to be part of a big storyline later on. Apart from that, it's a really fun episode. And that's it for this time. Sorry about the delays between these short reviews. I'm recording these around the turn of the new year and I just haven't had a lot of free time. Either way, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and all that if you're interested in seeing more of these later on. Until then, take it easy, internet.